that thing. I know, yeah, I did. I used to love playing. I, I still love it. Hard, yeah. yeah. And I just come play and my I have no style. So sometimes people are like, Wait, I don't know what you're doing. I was like, I do, I don't know what I'm doing. Sometimes I have good cards and I play That's real me. soft and sometimes I play aggressive. But there's the people that the movements start to do a certain thing and the way they start playing. Yeah. What do you mean by movement? Uh just when they get the cards, what they do, they just like lean back, mm. kinda like scout some of them don't like will just focus on their cards i mean it's like they got something good and they're just focused Checker. they're not worried about what anybody else has they're like okay i got like i have the nuts or you know and um stuff like that that you see do you have like a a, a way that you uh lean back or the way that you like i i think i do a movement that you do that is pretty common i think i do but i don't think i do you don't want to give out the secret <laughs> Sometimes I'm just like hanging out on my phone. Sometimes I get distracted. I'm just like yelling, or you know, like I like I I would like to say I have a style, but I don't because some days I'll play a lot of low cards, and then um I'll play like anything I get low, and then sometimes I play if it's low I'll just get rid of it. Mm. If it's low, like you know if I have three four I'm gonna play it, push it to the fullest, you know. And sometimes I have three four I'm like ah I don't want that. And then again understanding how the table moves, right. you know sometimes. I don't think there's a way, but if you just keep getting high cards, like you gotta just play with the, and then sometimes it's just not your I night. I mean, it's a lucky thing too. Like yeah, big. Day. I think it's a big time. Well, actually, they say like it's like sixty percent skill, forty percent luck, or something I like that. One hundred percent agree. I think poker is the one that's the highest amount of you have more control than all the other. Right. Right. Different ones. Yeah, because it's how you play it. And then I got the employees downstairs starting there, <laughs> and they started playing on their phone. I'm like, hey, come on. I mean, the only way you're gonna learn is by losing money. And I think that's like anything. Yeah. One thing you're gonna learn in business or what you do is like putting some money in and learning like, okay, this didn't work, gotta do it another way and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean business is a is a gamble as well. That exactly. I mean exactly. you can always do all your planning and you want, but if the market doesn't want it, right? right. The market right. doesn't want it. Correct, not correct. Gonna <laughs> it's not gonna no matter how good you plan it, yeah. how good your business plan is, it's exactly. just not gonna work. Sometimes you have the wrong cards. That's true. <laughs> well, welcome back, guys, with another episode of Living the Dream with Luis and Ray. In today's podcast, we have a special guest, uh, local here from Conroe, Texas. He's the owner of Happy Lens Media. Happy Lens Media, right? And correct, uh, you yeah. guys do video, digital marketing, social media. Correct, video marketing. Video marketing, mm -hmm. specifically. Specifically, yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of their, their videos and they're great. You know, it kind of changes wha how people see your business. Well, it really does. You know, it really puts a, um, a more established presence. Right, right. I think with everything that's going now, that's like, I don't say it's needed, but it's, it's a game changer of a, as advertisement. I mean, it's been several years now. It's not like it just started, but I think that's why I re talked to you that day because I knew that's something that I had to do the stores as well and i was like okay, i need to get into this side because just a, a little post a little regular two-dimensional post is not yeah well not. and the thing is is that because of social media like everything's moving that way in that direction mm. you know you got all businesses trying to catch up with the content because content right now is king right the more content you put out that means the more people are going to view your stuff right <clears throat> and so now everybody, all the businesses that didn't do it are starting to catch up. And so right. the competition is trying to get fierce. So I created a business to be able to separate each business with video mm. and stand them out in the crowd of different social media right. posts and videos and other stuff. So uh, I think it's important for every business to have a at least marketing that stands out Correct. from the crowd. Right. And it's different and it's cool and it's catchy. It's finding like a different way to see it yeah and like yeah, yeah. really you know i think um like i still go to the, like traditional like if i just this is my product i'm just gonna take a quick video here and upload it but there's more than that right it's different things. well it's it's the way you present it as well okay, okay. right uh, i think there's a uh, which is not bad i mean as long as you're putting content out there and the more people are watching it uh, i think it's important to right. put well, anything out that's what we say sometimes yeah, no? right? as long just as send it just send yeah, it sometimes. sometimes you gotta just send it and then eventually you'll get better as you as you progress. Right. It's like exactly. time. Like I see social media as like time. It's like 
in the present moment, like you can just wait and wait and wait until it's ready, you know, but time's still going to pass by. Like it's better for you to just do it. And then, you know, in 10 years or I'm not in 10 days or in 10 months, like after you've done so many posts, you eventually get better. Um, but if you never start, like you're always going to be a newbie, you know? Yeah. Well, there's a great saying, I think Sig Ziglar says it and he says, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. There you go. Right? There so you go. It's, Even, it's yeah. important. It's uh, important to start at least doing something. So at least get it going. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I started doing, I think, is to just start posting, just send it. Sometimes, yeah. I, sometimes I try, I think I spend more time trying to make it perfect. And then, like, I could have made two or three posts for the next few days mm -hmm. and just kind of send it. It's still going to look. Or you can just outsource. There you go. Well, so, <laughs> so, that, so that's the new goal. But I think that's been my fear and what right, we've right, talked right. about here is understanding as a business owner, you can't do it all. No, you can't. And um, no, um, can't. I've been, this is, well, I've been doing business for several years. Um, a lot of it failed, but the last five years has been successful and constant. Um, and that's where I'm trying to shift now where it's like, well, I have a phone, I can do it. And then it's like, but I also have 20 other million things to do. So it's finding the way to outsource. So what got you started? This is something you've always liked. Just <coughs> well, if I think back and I get asked this question all the time, but it, I really like psychology. Mm. I like, and by psychology, I don't mean necessarily, because I think a lot of people see psychology as like a manipulating thing. Um, but it's more of a, at least for me, uh, understanding human beings, mm -hmm. understanding their brain, understanding uh, who they are. And it's very important, especially in marketing, to understand where people are, where the market is. Right. But I got started uh, a long time ago when cameras first started to come out on phones. <clears throat> 2004, 5? Yeah, something like that with, uh, you know, the razors and <laughs> oh. all the little flip ones, oh. and it was, it was pretty interesting. And back the then, I mean, it was like, oh, yeah, sidekick. Yeah. 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 Flip flipped up like a Power Ranger. Mm-hmm. I'd be flipping, and it's like, yeah, I got a sidekick. Right. Everybody would be like, oh, my God. I never had one of those. Never. Or a razor. <laughs> but uh, oh, break. <clears throat> family used to come over, or friends, and my parents used to ask me to take a picture of them. And just because it was leveled and lined up, they would encourage me to keep taking pictures. They'd be like, oh my God, this is a great photo, it's a great picture. And so I kind of played with it here and there. I moved from um, different points in my life. At that time, I mean, throughout, basically until high school, I was like, soccer, soccer's my thing. <laughs> soccer, soccer. I love playing soccer. That's all of us. And that was kind of... Are we, are we a Spider-Man? Yeah, right? No, you know, point Spider -Man. Uh, and so that was kind of my uh, my outlet, I guess, for creativity was soccer. Hmm. So I use soccer as kind of my main drive to have a dream, right? There you go. And so, uh, and it, the videography, or at least the photography at the time with cameras... <clears throat> or flip phones, really, uh, was just, um, it was starting to grow on me, little by little, right? And at 15 years old, I got my sister-in-law to let me borrow her Nikon camera. Mm. Uh, it was the first DSLR I ever held and took pictures with. And I started to enjoy it more, fall in love with it more. Once you start learning things, like, for example, business is hard, and you're like, I don't know if I want to do it. Right. But the more you start learning, the more you start putting some attention to it, the more you're like, all right, let me, I'm let me, let me look in and into good. it a little more. It right. becomes like a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I took that, and, uh, you know, I was starting to take pictures and understanding how cameras work. And then along came uh, a good friend of mine who was like, hey, do you want to try parkour? Oof. Dang. And I was like... <laughs> I mean, sure, why not? <laughs> right. And parkour. so for the next eight years, I trained the discipline of parkour. How do you train parkour? What? And Knees that's over that's toes? <laughs> huh? Knees over toes, or how do you train parkour? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, definitely got to start small. You can't yeah. just jump in and Rich start, start jumping over buildings. But uh, we started out with uh, just doing small jumps. I mean, we're 14, 15 at this point. Maybe a little younger, but little jumps here and there. We'd find like little, uh, little cement mm -hmm. places, and we would just mm -hmm. jump. We would just challenge ourselves to like do better than the last. Were y'all seeing like right. YouTube videos? We were watching YouTube videos. Yeah. There was a lot of people on there that we followed. And that parkour. we, 
Parkour. into Inspired Us. By, uh, um, Vine was another Michael one Scott. that would post a lot. Oh, yeah, Michael Scott. That, when I hear Parkour, I go straight to The Office. See, and so The Office, it, that one came in later. <laughs> yeah, uh, later, later. Later on time. Yeah. And so uh, I think that's when it got more mainstream. But uh, this was back when, I mean, it was still pretty new. People were mm. still asking me, like, what is parkour? Right. Like, now everybody knows, obviously. Right. You say parkour, and they're like, oh, okay. I know some of what that the means. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I started training that. And to get better at myself, I started to obviously film myself so mm-hmm. that I can see what I'm doing. And obviously share it to, I mean, social media was starting to get big at this point. Uh, Facebook was starting to ramp up. And we just kept on training. Uh, I started to build a community with other parkour athletes mm. and we just helped each other kind of grow and understand the movement better and uh i was able to uh, be a part of a of a community that you didn't know it's there unless you're in it mm. you know right. what i mean and uh we would travel around the texas and do little competitions. Oh, wow. There weren't really competitions. There were more like meetups. Meetups, okay. yeah. And everybody would just challenge each other to like either jump higher, do a flip. Um, we we call there's this thing parkour called the line, which means you you basically have a routine of a series of flips okay. or a series of jumps, runs, um, and what parkour means is. I think is derived from French, uh, from France, and I forget the name of, of the founder or the guy who yeah, really kind of like pushed who, it who, forward. Who, who um, not invented it, but who created the uh, the parkour sport? Now it's a sport because now I'm I'm sure that there's like huge competitions yeah. and teams yeah, and uniforms and referees and mm-hmm. everything. Um, David. Yeah, yeah, David so one, Bell. Uh, Bell. David Bell, yes, that's right. David Bell. He's not not necessarily the founder. He's the one who like pushed it more more than anybody else. I mean, uh, I think parkour is kind of a derivative from like martial arts, and mm-hmm. there's some um, you know athletic performance of it. Definitely. It's more like street, right? It's kind of like, like uh, street, underground yeah. underground street. Kind of like um, when uh, skateboard started. You know, basically K- skateboard skateboarding started in the undergrounds and. Everybody was kind of doing their own flips and doing all this stuff, and then came here came comes uh, Tony Hawk and does a, you know, a and that's exactly what David Bell did. He yeah. just marketed it a lot better right. than everybody else, right? And mm. so he kind of pushed it. And even with um, skateboarding, skateboarding and videography go hand in hand. Like they cre- they they made the wa- the super wide angle fish lens like famous, Definitely. right? Very famous. Um, so I can see how that would apply to parkour as well, mm-hmm. where you have those super wide angles to capture yes. all the moves and the flips and the um, and the jumps. <laughs> what else is there? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, that's basically it. I mean, but <clears throat> parkour stands for the way that David pulled the... Because there's, there's a lot of derivatives from parkour now. There's mm-hmm. people that do parkour, and then there's something called free running, and then something called tricking. Which are all different, different derivatives mm-hmm. of, okay. of the same thing. But parkour, how David Bell put it, is that it's from getting from point A to point B in the most efficient way possible. Nice time. Yeah, you oh, read wow. it straight out of the dictionary. <laughs> nice time. Yeah. So uh, that's very scientific. Yeah. Very scientific. And in it, with that, you're using your body. It's not just mm-hmm. like if you can get in the car and drive. Right. No, right. It's, it's using right. your body right. in the most efficient way to get to, from point A to point B. The fastest? Is it like the fastest way too? Is it timed? or is Correct. It Correct. Yeah, there's a lot of competitions that are timed. Mm. So, I mean, that's what parkour it's, means. Is uh, TAG a, re- uh, a branch of that oh, too? Oh, I started seeing like, that. Seen TAG? TAG, I have a lot of friends that are in the TAG, TAG is community. awesome. Yeah, think that's it's cool. really cool. Have you like, tried it? I haven't tried it. No, I mean, I yes, we I tried it, not professionally. Like, right, but like you still. Myself. But I'll yes, break we. My knee. Yeah, I'm down to do that, and I mean, yeah, I might break my knees. And uh, physical 100, they had that, um, where you had to uh, carry. A, have you seen that physical 100 on Netflix. Netflix? I haven't seen it. Oh, you should watch it. It's awesome. like it's a Korean uh, competition mm-hmm. about a hundred athletes who train in all different areas like some of them are bodybuilders some of them are ufc fighters nice. some of them are cl- climbers some of them are olympian athletes, athletes any type of that. athletes women mm. and men, everything. everything and uh 
one of them have to like carry a ball and like whoever has the ball at the end mm-hmm. wins Ooh. so one of them was just running around and doing basically tag and trying to get him and trying to but he couldn't catch him yeah what's it called physical 100 <coughs> yeah physical 100 that's awesome they get, they get all sorts of people youtubers anything and, and they like recognize each other like, oh i know him he's a youtuber and oh he's like the strongest person she's the strongest woman yeah. so is it also like reality tv yeah oh, yeah okay, okay. Yeah. that makes sense, makes sense. Mm. that's and, cool um, i'll have to watch it because it's Korean, it's a different culture than American culture. And you see mm-hmm. the differences between, yeah. like, the American culture of, like, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> Korean. Versus Compared. Korean, yeah. Okay, I see. Interesting. Yeah, so I, so there, that's parkour, right? right? And then you have the other one, which which is free running. Mm-hmm. And free running stands really is the same thing as parkour, but you're not necessarily going somewhere. That's where the lines come in. Mm. And that's where you, uh, it's more about athletic performance more than it is from getting to point A to point B. It's more about uh, the coolest flip that you can do. Mm. It's mm. more about. It's uh, like freestyle. It's mm. more like freestyle, correct. It's like a freestyle of parkour. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, and then, uh, so that was kind of my favorite because I didn't do a lot of the. Uh, parkour's discipline is very rooted in free running, so you can't really get away from it, but. Uh, free running was more of my my niche or mm. my place where I kind of hung out more, and then tricking is more uh, it's more of a martial arts derivative. There's a lot of uh, taekwondo that goes into it. Uh, it's a lot of kicking. Mm. It's called tricking, kicking. Mm. Uh, but it's just doing a, lot, a bunch of tricks. Really, mm. it's just it's about using your body and the most. It's a lot of calisthenics, right? Like a lot of. Uh Cause I see, the, I see this, and then I, s- uh, it reminds me of um, a lot of athletes that just mm-hmm. do calisthenics. Mm-hmm. Like all they do is bar, all they do mm-hmm. is like the, you know, the, yeah, s- the monkey stuff, the, the human the flag. The, yeah, Oof, yeah. It reminds me of all that. And yeah, those so are, those uh, are like, uh, and then gym, like gymnastics, you know, the gymnastics. gymnasts, they're all in freaking incredible shape. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like they don't lift one single weight yeah, of dumbbell. Down. I'm they not use like that. They use body weight. Yeah. 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 That's smart. And that's what I that's the what I've been trying to shift to into recently. Stop worrying about trying to bench a lot and worry about being able to move more. I think that's, that's been my new Yeah, and I think that's why it that's why parkour attracted a lot of people once started getting more mainstream mm-hmm. was because uh first of all it's different, right? It's like, well, what is that? But at the same time it's uh you're using your body in a much more creative way. Right using your body in a in a in a way where it's like you didn't know how to use your body in that in that way at least most people don't most people aren't out there being stunt devils or correct you you think it comes in age when then the parkour slows down like you're like hey for sure i mean 40 years old i can continue to flip this way i mean i have talked to so many people and they're like yeah i did parkour when i was you know five six seven years old and I, I get, I get what like they mean. They they, they had a lot of around. energy and they moved around. They jumped. There's also programs like in uh, gyms that they, they they call it ninja. Like there's a whole yeah. thing called well, ninja. That too. Mm-hmm. And ninja warrior kind of pushed the core oh, yeah. a little more mm-hmm. too. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of branches. It's more to CrossFit, no? No, but like there's programs that are called ninja. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Like mm-hmm. on local g- local gyms and uh, local mm-hmm. gymnasiums. Yep. Oh, you know that. Yep, that's what I need to get into then, because I, I need to move. There's a gym in on 1960. Uh, I forget the name of it, but a Ninja Warrior, I guess, a winner, mm. opened up a gym over there, and everything's about uh, just different obstacles. Obstacle really, courses. yeah, yeah, obstacle courses. Yeah. It's crazy. We so, do you think a parkour? Now I'm looking into hypotheticals. A parkour athlete. Um, would be really good at like obstacle courses. Absolutely. Yeah. You just yeah. Do, 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 oh, they, yeah, yeah, right. I mean, they would be the <laughs> fastest ones. The um, everybody, yeah. for sure. The ones that easy does the. Um, yeah, like the runs, like the yeah. mud runs. Mud runs. So I, and I've done some Spartan races. There you go, mm-hmm. Spartan races. And uh, it's been pretty, pretty, pretty easy. easy. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. When's the next like level? But that was that was back when I was. You know, <laughs> but I mean, you still look in shape. You still. I might be somewhat in shape but i i have not, my not body cannot move in that way anymore <laughs> i just haven't trained and you know if you don't use something you lose it correct, so correct 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 uh, i haven't been able to to have the time to to do right. that really yes, i mean yes. i could set a t- aside <laughs> time i just 
you know, other things you have, have other to take priorities. priorities. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But I that, I use that parkour to film myself, film film others, mm. and that's how I started getting start into more into mm. videography. And then you needed different lenses. You needed something you with autofocus, something with mm -hmm. not autofocus, something with stabilizing. Yeah, because shaky really. ass videos, and, and that's what the fish eyes, right. fish eye lenses, they help use you for. not not be so. Uh, shaky yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. kind of opens up to view a little bit more if you're yeah. more telephoto or more closer the camera shakes a lot more but uh, I use that and I started to use editing Tools. softwares what, what, uh, what did you use at the beginning Windows Media Editor oh, okay yeah that was back when it was very basic I had, I had like a bootleg of uh, Sony Vegas I oh, see. Yeah. You started out with that? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. That was, yeah, in high, in high that was, yeah, <laughs> that was had, already up here. We had it in high school. That's why. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, well, high that helps, school that and, helps uh, a lot. We, we had it in the broadcasting channel. Oh, nice. And nice. Uh, I was like, and then back in the day, you bootlegged everything, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. off of uh, Bear Share or Pirate Bay or wherever you, you yeah. got your... Uh, your legal, stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, legal internet-ish. Ish. And... Yeah, this is the days. So I, st <laughs> I started out with window, Windows Media Editor, which is, was like a basic. Like all you gotta do is drop the videos and cut, and that's it. Like you can't, you can't add effects. That's and if yeah. the, if there are effects, like grayscale, and that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. So I use that to kind of understand the post editing mm -hmm. of things. Yeah, it's like how do I get this stuff over there? Mm -hmm. You know, and then you, you know, I. What camera did you use if it was if, if you were doing video back in the day? My phone. Oh, this okay. is when uh, mm -hmm. you know iPhone started to come out mm -hmm. and okay. uh, Android started to come out and oh, the okay. camera quality was a lot better Starting than the flip yeah. ones. Oh, yeah. So yeah, obviously, definitely. and it could record now, and so um, that's kind of what I used mostly. Yeah, that was the the entry level kind of like video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And back in the day, probably uh, I don't know what y what year was that. I don't even know. 2009, 2010. Yeah, like oh, okay. The first uh, iPhone was, I think, eight. Yeah, I yeah. had the first, first iPhone, iPhone is second uh, one and third one. Five, I think. Yeah. 2005 was the first iPhone. Oh, dang. Yeah. Maybe that's when yeah, I first got it. I had a very crappy video, for sure. Like, I mean, it was. Yeah, it was but it was something worth, <laughs> like, I mean, it, you would watch it on 2007. something crappy, June 29, 2007. Oh, 2007. First release. Yeah, I remember a year yeah, after. The storage for gigabytes <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad Dang. though that four like gigs that's not bad i mean at the time that was incredible Ooh, i remember when incredible things had like 500 kick megabytes we're like oh my god oh, it's like geez i had to that's wait for dial-up i had to try like seven times before yeah. i got a video to download and then they would just wait for Forever. the next day it's yeah. like all right i'm in the internet all right i downloaded this video i'm gonna come back tomorrow and watch mm -hmm. it Still, mine still wouldn't download. It would take two or three days. So, and then I would hate when you would get the wrong video. You're like, dang it, this isn't what I, this isn't the one I wanted, or it's in a different language. Then I started. I was way behind with technology, so I was like, what you guys were using, I was probably not using until five years later, probably. But no. there was there was one time where uh, I was. It was a little younger. It was before the iPhone, but I went over to uh, my mother's work. She cleaned houses and. Uh, she was cleaning this ranch and uh, beautiful place uh, out in Montgomery, I think. And she let me borrow her phone and I was playing with her phone <coughs> and I started to use the internet. I was like, hey, let me look at some stuff and everything. And uh, I didn't think anything about it. And then two weeks later, a bill comes Ooh. in Ooh. and it was like $500 yeah. in additional to what she right. was already paying. And uh, that like, was crazy. It yeah. was Intense. Yeah. It's like I didn't know you were paying so much right. to use the internet, and it was literally just to load up. It wasn't even like mm -hmm. I mean now we can just load it up in five seconds. Right. Back then it took like a minute. Like every to kilobyte was like dollars. Mm -hmm. And you would see the kilobyte numbers and like oh that's gonna be. Yeah, and I didn't know that you know. I'm, yeah, I'm of course. You're kid. like oh it's just going. Right, right, right. It's and just part of it comes yeah. with the phone. It's like oh that's cool. I can look things up in the internet on Dang. the phone. That's like the same thing with the minutes and the talk time yeah, yeah. and the text message mm -hmm. thing. And so. You know, five hundred dollars later, they're like, "You're not getting a phone anymore." Is there things now that that are like that? Do we like um, things that are like super overpriced that might be? 
I don't know. I feel like streaming services are a little like that. Mm. But they're more um, spread out. They're more spread out. I mean, you can decide to get them or not. But in terms of that, <clears throat> I, I mean, I'm, they're still like, I think they still have like phones that have minutes on them and stuff like that. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're still like we think of Internet and as like devices that are like, oh, we have iPhone. What is it? 14, 15. But right. That's only like in America and and and, yeah. and and top, you know, percent of the world. Everywhere, everywhere else, they still have like super old Windows computers, super old Androids. Um, Internet still super slow. Um, right. Well, even not that far. I mean, Willis and country and some of these places are barely starting to get that faster Internet as well. Oh yeah. So we have it. I mean, we're here in downtown area, so we're like spoiled. We're like yeah. Yeah. Come on, Elon Musk. We need uh, more Starlinks. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, like we. I finally got that. Um, that green internet. Ta- talkies or Takis. Takis or what is it called? <laughs> what ta- is it? Ta- ta- the internet. The new one. It's like you pay eighty bucks a month, and it's like super fast. Interesting. It's fiber. Yeah, it's, it's fiber. Fiber cable. Yeah. Fiber cable. Well, I just found it. I live in League Line, so I finally got it over there. I was like, buy Optimum, buy Southern Link. Oh, nice. And then it's like super. F- yeah, you, day and night. How fast it is. But here it was already available. Comcast is available here. All oh, that's yeah. available yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Not in league line, so I, I guess that makes sense. And five G's coming out, or should be already out <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Different areas. So <laughs> then I I uh, started to after the parkour stuff. I started to get really good at it. There was new editing software that I was using. Uh, I was finally able to get a camera. I got a GoPro, Oof. and I started to play with uh, stabilizers when stabilizers were starting to come out to make things more smoother. Did you have a physical one? Yeah, I had the um, those things were the horrible. eye glide. Unless you had a, a really good one. Oh yeah, I had to practice a lot. To it's like a whole scale. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thing is thing massive. Is, thing is massive, and you have to balance it right, and it gets pretty heavy if your c- camera's heavy. Yeah, like it was. It was a lot. Um, look up, I guess the eye glide, five hundred, five thousand. Yeah, you had a you had to be really good yeah. at that stuff because so it was like one of the. Uh, I never got it. Oh yeah, the guy right there is holding yeah. the. Yeah. I got that cheap one because I was broke. That's <laughs> very very cheap one. No, I'll keep going cheaper. That one, <laughs> <laughs> and that thing didn't work. Yeah, the so camera would just go. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. I try to use that new one that they have those gimbals. Those are still hard too. Have those you know? those those have learning curve for yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm not getting that no more. Somebody had it. And I was like, oh, I need to get one because I'm gonna become a a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> that was the YouTube craze, yeah, right? Yeah. And we all yeah, wanted to be sure. YouTube, sure. and I think. We all could have. Like, if we had a camera, we really didn't need much. Yeah. You know? Um, it was just, like, always, it's our mentality of, like, Holding we, we're not good back. enough. Yeah, right? we, for sure. We don't want to put our face out there because we think someone's going to look at the weird wrinkle in my face. Oh. Something dumb. I just you know? didn't know. I didn't know how to do this stuff. And then I would have. <laughs> trying to do it now. I didn't care. But I think it was just that, like, understanding this stuff. And how to send it and what to send. Mm, mm-hmm. I mean, even then, I think now you can. Th- I, don't, I don't think you're still in a bad time to start a YouTube. Nope. And like, no, just I mean, YouTube is the second biggest search engine. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. so I mean, there's literally YouTube. everything and anything you can find. And, and second, there's, like, there's like, still you, more like earlier you said, the parkour was like a group. If you knew, mm-hmm. you knew. But there's channels that you don't think. Like, I'm sure we can look up something, make it up, and there'll be a video on how to do it. Oh yeah. So um. So you got this glide, glide thing, glide cam, glide gear. The eye glide. The eye glide, and then you start practicing, and then when was it that you were like, okay, this is what I want to do? This is it. <coughs> I think, I think as I practice more, I think it grew on me. Mm-hmm. And at this time, you're still working. You're going to school. So you're still. <coughs> um, right after high school, I went to college. I went to Lone Star, and they had a film program mm. where they. Um, <coughs> taught students how to you know how to do video, video production really mm. and at the time um i had already done a lot of studying like i had put my i guess my head down and i just was studying everything i was learning as much as i could and um, on, vid- on video about video yeah i mean youtube mm-hmm. already come out so mm-hmm. i was on youtube the whole YouTube time university. Um, researching and asking questions and whatnot and uh i went to college and um uh, the teacher there was was a great teacher but all my other students were like 
I mean, super newbie. They were super newbies. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were like, what some, is some new rain? film and some were like, I mean, they were like, what's a camera, right? right. <laughs> so, uh, so I, it hindered my learning a lot. Mm. So I was only there for two years and then I left, I decided because I, I just had learned too much like in my, on my own. And uh, everything that I was learning was just a summary of what I had already learned. Right. right. And so, so I didn't want to keep spending money on something that I already knew. Mm. And it's good to like rewrite it, you know, relearn it and study it and whatnot. Right. But uh, I already had done that too. Like Correct. I've done it multiple, multiple, multiple times. So already, it was already drilled in my head. Mm-hmm. And so I left college and I started to work on my first business. I called it Mendes Productions. <laughs> and uh, we all have a lot of those. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I started like four, maybe four different production businesses that I try to launch. And each time, I mean, they would fail. Obviously, I wasn't in the right mindset. I still didn't know a lot of things. They didn't know how to run a business. Right. That's a, yeah. And my product wasn't best still. I was still working on developing my own, uh, my own skills mm-hmm. in editing and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I was work- I started working in the oil field. I worked at NOV, and I worked at uh, uh, different restaurants, Panera Bread and uh, Chick-fil-A. And I think if you talk to a lot of young men in Conroe, they would say uh, that they worked at NOV yeah. mm-hmm. or uh, Walgreens Distribution or Walmart Distribution or mm-hmm. any of those, like, big-name employers – because back in the day, that that was the thing to do because there was nothing. If you didn't, like, um, you know, continue school and finish or if you didn't uh, find a trade or if you weren't working at, like, your dad's place or somebody's business, like, that was the place to go because they would pay, like, 19 20 an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And who else was going to pay you that much at that time? Nobody. Especially at a young age. Like, yeah. Especially at, like, 21, 22, yeah. 19, like, that age. Like, why wouldn't you, mm-hmm. you know? And I think we all went through yeah, that went stage. Through that. And then finding the next new oil job. And so it would dip. And you're like, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Damn yeah. it. Back to the and restaurant. And what, what I did not necessarily like working in the oil field, but it taught me how to evaluate, how to value time a lot more. Because, uh, I mean, I was there working 12, sometimes 14 hours a day, you know, uh, six days a week. And, uh, I mean, it was toll on the body. And I started out in the night shift, right? So I was working Ooh, from 6 p.m. Yeah. to 6 a.m. Yeah. And it was just, it was just, I, that's all I did. Like a zombie. Yeah, yeah, that's no all life. I did. You literally could so, sleep. So uh, we used to do uh, filters. We used to make filters for the oil companies. And as I'm putting the, um, uh, you know, as I'm working, because everything is systemized, so you don't have to think. You just, right. just, just got to do, do it. Yep. They teach yep. you how to do it, and you just do that all day long. Just same, same. thing over and, over and over again. Day after day, week after week, year after exactly. year. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so my mind would just drift, and uh, eventually they let us use earphones right when the little the tiny ones started to come out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we started to use that, um, and I started listening to podcasts, started listening to uh, different people talk about, you know, learning more right. about business, learning more about... Uh, Tony Robbins? No. Tony Robbins, yeah. Um, that was my that was my uh, that was game that was changer my mentor. mentor. I listen to. I was listening to a lot of uh, at the time. I was listening to a lot of um, criminal justice podcast. Oh, the what's the one that's called, what is it called? True True Life. No, was it called True Life or True Life? I haven't heard that one. I listened to one that's kind of they t- they take a comedic way to it. It's called mm. Small Town Murder. Mm. And oh, stuff like that. <clears throat> yeah, I know. It's <laughs> I was very into that, but it took a comedic way into the whole mm-hmm. conundrum of you know things that happen in small towns. Uh, but that kind of listening to that kind of you know after a while you get tired of it, so you start looking at other podcasts and you yeah. start looking at other things. And then you have the time. And I have all the time in the world. Yeah. Me. And uh, you know I'm just doing the same thing right. over and over again. I it's have crazy it how much time you have for your mind whenever you do something so repetitive mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah now, now that i think about it like yeah i did that too like i 
driving to Houston for three years, I learned how to weld. I learned how to be a mechanic. I learned how to do all this stuff just by listening and, and seeing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's like just driving, like all the most boring thing you could do. Super boring. <laughs> yeah. That's when my mind wanders horribly. So that's kind of where I started to get like the right mindset to like, all right, I got to value more time because mm -hmm. I'm spending 12 hours here. I'm starting. I'm like starting to learn more about business, e-commerce, all that good stuff, and I don't have all the time in the world when I get home. I get home, you know. At the time, uh, my wife was my ex-wife was, um, you know, would make me dinner, and then I would just work on the computer, and then by, you know, I had shifted over to the daytime, but, um, you know, at night around 9 p.m. I would go to sleep, so I only had two hours to do my work, do all of my uh, whatever I wanted to learn, mm -hmm, right? right? A couple hours to be on the computer. And so that taught me to val to value time a lot more. And uh, once I got out of it, I was like, all right, this is, this is not it for me anymore. Uh, I had left and I started working for a dance studio. And this is when I really got into videography because, or at least uh, perfecting my skills mm -hmm. at video. I had the opportunity to focus on solely just video and working for somebody. And so they gave me these, this platform, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. to like... They gave you subject, they gave you a story, <coughs> they gave you everything, the whole thing there. Exactly. Right? And it was more than just that. It was, it was I was learning more marketing because it was mm -hmm. a business and they were using it for, for their own business. And at the time, it was just like how to, how to use material to teach other of their students mm -hmm. to dance. Oh, it wasn't okay. more of a marketing thing yet and so we started using youtube and at the time they only had a few hundred followers and throughout the time that i was there three years later they had well now they have over ninety thousand followers on, on subscribers on youtube nice. but it taught me a lot on perfecting my skill understanding marketing um a lot more and i was just doing a lot of studying like did a lot, you a lot of did you um in that job did you have somebody that would be like hey this is what we're gonna do like a marketing manager or a marketing director or like anybody <coughs> that kind of was over that department or were you just on your own um we had uh well the business owner at the dance studio was he's really good he's mm -hmm. really good at marketing he's mm -hmm. done a lot of research and he's done a lot of read a lot of books and um he was a good proponent in terms of the direction that the company took. And so uh, he did a really good job in kind of having a vision and being mm -hmm. able to push that way. But for the most part, I had to do a lot of a lot of work the on technical my own. stuff on your own, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, usually had small business is how it is. Like you do all the technical stuff and then there's like the, the owner or um, somebody like guiding that direction. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So he kind of he kind of set the, the, the fuel tone. to the fire, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. Uh, but he kind of set the direction of where, where we wanted to go. Uh, but I did all the technical stuff, mm -hmm. like you said, and editing and being able to use editing more for business growth, more than just pretty looking images. Right. Does that make sense? Right. Mm -hmm. right. And so that, and I mean, at, at the time, same time, I'm like reading books and I'm learning and I'm trying to study and figuring out the best ways to do this and that. And uh, when I left, the studio I was well during the studio I was like well if I can help these guys this business do the get to a high level where they are just making a lot of money I think I can do this for other companies right. as well right. right and at the time I wasn't really involved in the community of Conroe mm -hmm. and uh, right before I left I started to um, really focus on Conroe and this community and I started going to uh, you know, different networking groups. What year, what year was that? It was a couple of years ago. Mm. Like before COVID or after COVID? It was kind of like during COVID. During? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like during COVID because uh, they had kind of laid me off of that job because, you know, COVID and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Right. They probably didn't so have any classes and. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, the, a lot of the job. Or a lot of the work kind of slowed down, but because we had videos, and because we had a platform where we could teach mm. people still, and you can look them up. It's called. Uh, you can go to xdance.tv. And uh, 
because of that, it helped their <coughs> business grow even more because everybody was at home and they were watching all their right. videos. So it really helped. You the already out had a, a whole library, a, f- a huge library, huge library. That like we, I've made over <coughs> a thousand videos with them. Wow. Yeah. Did they monetize on any of that or not? all of it? Yeah, all of it. We used every single strategy as much as we could mm-hmm. to monetize every single piece of content that we put out. That's incredible. So, so that taught you lessons that you're now using still. Correct. 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 What was it called? Xdance dot TV. Oh, X. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so now, you know, during COVID you're going out, you're basically out on your own, you know, uh, doing all these networking events like BNI. I went to one of those BNI mm-hmm. events, uh, mm-hmm. they didn't really, re- didn't really call my attention, but I could see how, um, services help each other out so that, so that like they have like a group and right. then you're part of this group right. and then anybody, anybody that needs that certain service, then they go out. See, the, w- the weird thing about being nice, man, is that it's a little intimidating. Right. Because, because you don't know anybody. Mm-hmm. And everybody kind of already knows each other. Mm-hmm. Right. And so uh, at first, uh, it is a little intimidating to go. But that helped me kind of step out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Right. And so my goal was mainly to just put myself in situations where I can grow and learn mm-hmm. from. And so that's what I did. And so I just started going to different meetings, going to different I mean, I would just insert myself anywhere that I could, at least just to meet people. It didn't mm-hmm. necessarily mean to join any any part of the group. Um, and so I started to, you know, I I met San through there, mm-hmm. uh, through some of that. I met Taylor through some of that. And, uh, you know, once you start knowing some of the people there, they start to recommend you to other people and right, they start right. to, hey, check this guy out, blah, blah, blah. And so I had a really good product. So they were like, oh, well, let's do some business together. And uh, I had already opened my business, Happy Lens Media, and uh, I started to facilitate all my services to all the businesses in downtown Conroe, specifically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you see, uh, I was looking at your website, and you have a lot of the downtown people. Um, and downtown really has, like, grown in the past, mm-hmm. like, three years, three or four years, like, post-COVID. Uh, like, before COVID, it seems like it was not as... right. But now, like, they have, like, events after events after event, and then they have um, so many different businesses there that are for um, for the people to go there, not right. just offices and right. lawyers and things like that. So they're, they're trying to get those people up off the, you know, off the first floors. Um, but, you know, it's, like, in five years, it's going to be... Yeah. Crazy I mean, you guys see the new yeah. buildings are building there, too. Yeah. Right, right. So right across. Three new because. big buildings. Yeah. Yeah, so for us that provide services for small businesses like that, I think it's a big, it's a big um, opportunity, mm-hmm. um, not only for us but for everybody. But you know, for us that do like more of that digital media stuff, like, like I'm on, uh, I'm on like your same boat. Like it's been like a crazy journey of seeing the growth that social media has brought. You know, the internet, um, video, photography, all these things that you thought oh, they're just passion projects. Now that you're able to build the whole business around it, you know, it's like, yes, this is exactly what, you know, where everything lines up and now you're doing what you what you enjoy. Right, 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 right. And, uh, you know, all for the benefit of the businesses, all for the benefit of them. And also, uh, I think video helps kind of communicate that message to their customers. Well, yeah, video right now is, it's like, the thing to do because everything like reels, TikToks, YouTube shorts, like those are the big things right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, those are the things that get the most views. Those are the things that go viral. Those are the things that hold the most attention. Right. You know, it's proven, you know, that it holds the most attention. But let's let's take it back even further than that. I mean, TV back in the 1950s was right. a huge, huge thing. Right. Mm-hmm. right. And so that caught a lot of attention. Now it's just more accessible and more people can use it. Right. And it's at an instant. And it's it's never it's never gonna go away. And now they have like the algorithm that allows you to be uh-uh. like uh Not the you algorithm. Know, tuned in into your psyche back to psychology. Like yeah. they know exactly what triggers your dopamine, Do- dopamine hits. Yep. And it's like, Oh, this guy likes this, let's give him a little bit of that. But not too much. 
Right. So you keep just keep them there. Mm-hmm. Every like for fifth video, give it, give it to him. Yeah. Give it to him. Yeah. So I can't sit there and scroll. That's why I had to get rid of TikTok. That thing was just. Oh yeah, yeah I I'd sit there I for a, for a long <laughs> time. I'd just sit there and just. It's like yeah. TikTok is a strong. It's like it knows me. It's like <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, like it's just because it's so addictive. Right. It's so addictive. And it knows me. It exactly. knows what I like. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. It's like I mean, oh another one, another one. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, those videos then reward all the creators. Right. As well to do more videos. More videos. Right. And so it's like a cycle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They they got their marketing down tremendously too good. Like it's it's scary good. Right. Right. Um. But then also like that's the um the bad side of of that is like the addictive stuff right um but for businesses and for creators like there's an opportunity there to be able to use the algorithms and the ads and the um, marketing knowledge to deliver the product that you that you're marketing for to the people that need it you know that's like you're the bridge between the service product. and the people yep. the know, solution and, and the problem. Some, sometimes yeah, they don't it. even know each other mm-hmm. they're like both of them are like you know one of them's over here struggling the other person's over here struggling it's like hey i want you to meet each other there, there's this diagram it's a it's a triangle diagram you can look this up it's called the, the um larger market f- uh, larger market formula yep. things called and it basically uh, says that at the bottom of the pyramid, you have people that don't know what the problem is. Mm. I haven't seen this. And uh, and that's how mainly it is. People don't know what the problem is. And so you got to use marketing to facilitate to those people, right, mm. to make them understand or make them uh, see a little more about what's, what their problem is, right? And then you have people that are looking for the solution or at least they're problem aware but they're not really – really necessarily looking to buy they're not mm. they're aware but they're not looking for necessarily a solution right and then above that you got um information gathering mode these are people that are more they understand what the problem is and now they're looking for more information about how to solve the problem and then at the top is the three percent that are people right. that are buying now and so a lot of marketers or at least a lot of businesses they target that three percent yeah uh they're just like, buy now buy now right now this this right now right now and so they don't understand that there's a huge market underneath that a huge huge market and if you can able if you're able to teach them information give them information because we live in the information yes. realm i mean it's just that's how the world is now um and so if you are able to give them the information and so they understand the problem and to communicate with them that you have the solution to solve their problem then you can work that you're you can work their way up to get them to the buying part. Correct. And they'll be more loyal customers. They'll be more, um, they'll be more advocates for whatever service or product that you have that you deliver to them. Like this that. is very psychology because my psychology. wife is a psychologist and, uh, she showed me a graph like this, but it's more horizontal and it's mm-hmm. like the people here, they don't know that they need help. Yeah. And then this people here, they know, but they're okay with their, you know, mm-hmm. their suffering or whatever it is that they have. And I'm butchering this chart because it's not right. <laughs> you get on you. Uh, and then, like, you have the people that know they have a problem but don't know how to fix it. And then there's the people that know they have a problem and they want to fix it. And then there's the people that are desperate to fix it. Right, right. So it's very, very similar, very similar. to that. Yeah. And then, of course, in sales, you have, like, the uh, the hot leads and then the cold leads and then you have, like, the you know the you have to um what's it called um basically filter your leads making mm-hmm. sure that you have the ones that are actually um qualified and right? qualifying your leads all that stuff it's all very very similar um but the more you understand the more you can uh, like see how it relates to your business right. and how it relates to your product and your services right um this, this is, is interesting. very interesting yeah, yeah because you can target the 60 percent correct with a, a marketing campaign mm-hmm based on information and then you can target the 20 percent with a you know solving the problem and then the 17 and then the three percent all of them could have different marketing campaigns and marketing mm, videos right. directed to them right and the reason people don't target that bottom 80 percent or 97 percent is because it's just hard 
it's hard to because you don't get it's like an open you don't get a quick return mm-hmm. on investment from right. you have to really you have to like long game right it's a long game it's a long game it's like awareness 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 for a, for a couple of months mm-hmm. and that's exactly what we did with the studio right we taught people how to dance mm-hmm. or they saw the videos we taught them a little bit we told them how to understand it and then we upsell them with or at least we sold them on coming into the studio and buying packages mm-hmm. for them to dance right so it was kind of this gradient of where you took them to the information mode and they're like well i want to learn more and then they would come in to that's awesome into buying programs to to learn how to dance and so this is what i recommend to every business that's out there is uh first of all do your market research right understand who you're t- targeting who right. who your real ideal client is but even more than that understanding their hopes their dreams their concerns their um their fears uh, really understanding the core of who they are so that you can very you can use that to leverage your marketing and right. being be able, able to really to deliver to them correct in a more in a more impactful and more compelling marketing in a strategy. deeper way where that it's not just you're just selling the product you're, right. you're gaining a loyal uh, follower somebody that's going to keep coming back and advocate for you so and another one is uh here's another little one for you uh, or at least for everybody that's watching is to use stories as much as possible oh, yeah. yeah storytelling S- storytelling we've been telling stories since the dawn of time correct and uh without a story i mean wh- what do we have you know what do we have in movies and well people want to learn more than just the surface level stuff mm-hmm. and if you are able to dive deeper into a Wh- story what do you think about the the co- I, mean, I mean i'm sure you watch the super bowl commercials because i mean who doesn't but because of your industry and like do you have like this beautiful story and then at the end boom they throw in the the pharmaceutical mm. it's like mm-hmm. or the ad you know they use that as a hook and then they yeah they throw in that yeah that one's you know anywhere else in the country or in the world they don't allow to advertise pharmaceuticals s- pharmaceuticals like that wow. the u.s is the only one that does that wow i didn't know that that's mm. a rabbit hole worth uh yeah. not going into yeah let's <laughs> not get lost in, you know yeah wow so pharmaceuticals take advantage of that for sure of course it's a part and of the I marketing mean, th- plan they have a i mean they have a huge budget so obviously they're gonna do everything they can to tell a story like that and be yeah. able to be an uplifting stuff but it works, right? And so any business that is out there trying to do something like that or, um, you know, at least stand out a little more and have a deeper connection with whoever's watching, it's important to have a story. Right. It's important to have a story. Yeah. If you if you look at any mm. any uh, advertisement that you, like, resonated with, whether it's, like, FIFA, right, mm. or uh, where there's anything else that really resonates with you, you're like, wow, that was a really good ad. Yeah. And then they relate that story to the yeah. target audience, right? Yeah. It's like they put that hero target audience person into that story. Right. And then you become that hero. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh, that's me. I want to be that person. Yeah. And then oh, now I want that product. Well, that's, that's the reason we love movies and love shows. Right. right? They tell a story. Yeah. Right. Usually the story is about yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. Way. Exactly. Because they use these universal archetypes of like, mm-hmm. this is the hero everybody wants to be. There's a meme that's like says like ever like ninety seven percent of guys think that they're Batman. <laughs> Why we're not? <laughs> I thought I was. Well, you never seen me and Batman yeah, in the exactly. same room. Yeah, exactly. All right, <laughs> so it could be. There you go. Just saying. That's awesome, man. I really like this chart right here, and I think it and and it really puts in perspective what the businesses should be and are doing. Um, and the way I see it is just like why. Right, when people always ask us or ask me, like, what the, what the smoke shop and the CBD stuff that we sell, like, what's different? Or, you know, I would question myself, like, am I doing what other stores are doing or am I above and be Like, you know, like, is this normal? Because right. I went into the smoke smoke shop business without smoking. I don't smoke. I don't vape. I don't do. But um, understanding that the first thing that we pushed was knowledge and, and right. sharing to the customer. Like, we're not going to sell you something. We're going to teach you what it does, how it can help you, how it can, maybe it doesn't help you. And then that's what really started building our customer base. But this is kind of like, but we were doing it on a one-to-one basis. And like we said earlier, it's now time to take it into um, a larger, a larger audience. Yeah. audience. Yeah. Teach people how to use it and you understand the product. I mean, 
people yeah. are going to resonate with that more because then then they understand they're like oh i get it right right it's right more than just like uh, I, I get it but right instead of just here take it you're going to yeah. feel better like okay no yeah. well what's the issue what are you doing you know i play with your grandkids you know you just help your joints and you know start telling them all this and they're like okay and uh, and then a lot of times um that same day they don't they might not buy and then they'll come back like hey i can't I came the other day and you were telling me this and I was thinking about it and I did my research. And research, then I right? think, you know, I yeah. think you're good. Yeah. Those so. are people in the information gathering mode. They're like, no, all right, yeah. I get it. It's 17%. And then, and then they come in. And then they come in they're like, all right, we're ready to buy. We're ready to buy. Right, you move them up a ladder. There so that's, that's, a, awesome. that's an important diagram for <coughs> businesses to use for sure. Right. So when a business contacts you, um, you come out, uh, I, was, I was seeing your stuff. Um, you like to set up a marketing plan. You like to sit down. It's not just like, hey, can you come take some video real quick and post it for me? You don't. No, I, I try not to do that because I, I really want to focus on growing businesses. Okay. It's, I mean, anybody can go out there. I mean, there, I have a lot of friends that can shoot a really good video and it looks beautiful and everything. But there's not a lot of planning in the marketing side of things. Like more and like so an event videographers or photographers right. right and so they i mean they can be used as marketing but a lot of the times what i see is that those videos don't really perform very well and, and marketing is all about metrics so if they're not performing very well then it might have been a really good video but nobody watched it right so uh, one thing that i still don't fully understand it's like how do you and i'm sure it's like a google bull answer but like how do you measure the metrics between video and like sales like is it like views and then what like views means like a good video but then what about those views how many of those are like transactions yeah right right um it depends it depends on the platform that you're using um, and it also depends on the video. Like, if it's just an entertaining video mm. and you don't have a call to action or anything like that, uh, you know, a message trying to tell them to come in or whatever, then it's, it, that becomes a little hard if you don't have something like that. Then it's just an entertaining piece or an informational piece. Um, so using a call to action is a really good way to, to, to kind of uh, use those analytics because then they can come in and say, hey, I saw your content. Yeah, you can see that through the... Uh CMS that you're using. Right, right. Yeah, so I, I, did, <laughs> what I did a few weeks ago, I sent out an email because I have a bunch of emails from the customers. And then I, I showed him, he's like, well, where's the call to action? Like, <laughs> what do you mean? He's like, well, you gave them some info, but where do they go to the website? Where do they find? I was like, oh, I need that? And they're like, well, yeah, like you want them to, like, you know, you just gave them information, but then what? And I was like, dang it. Yeah. But a lot of big proponents of, like, document and information is like, I don't know if you know who Chris Doe is. Um, he's a big yeah, yeah. Uh, branding expert, and then Gary V. He's the of course. you know, of course. he's like you want to give, 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 give. You know, like wh his books, like right, right hook or something right, like right, that. Right, so right, it's right, like give, hook. give information, and then it's like eventually you just say, well, yeah, you know, here's a product that could teach you more. That's well, that, I mean, he teaches <coughs> yeah that diagram that I showed you guys earlier. Mm -hmm. Oh, We're straight out of the book. So oh. it's just give, 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 information, information, and then at some point, like if 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 you're new to a market, or at least if you're the first person that they see, let's say you're trying to solve a problem, they're going to most likely, and if you're teaching them something, you're giving them information, they're going to likely stick with you longer mm. than if they seen somebody else. You have to be the first person mm -hmm. to kind of make them understand or open their eyes a little bit, and they're going to go and look at your stuff more and understand what you do and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So how do you... Um it's uh, similar questions like uh, how do you, uh, with businesses that are a little bit more like hard headed that they'll probably be problem aware, kind of like on that psychology front, but they don't want to fix it, you know? Like, do you just keep throwing information at them? Like, it's not gonna be personal information, you know? But right. Like in this general pool of people that. Well, see, I because <coughs> here in Conroe, like, there's a lot of like hard-headed people that for sure want to keep it the same for sure and the, the thing about that is that um i have my information out there so they can learn mm -hmm. and if they want to use it they can use it and i try to teach them at least the m more i'm doing now is uh, trying to at least teach them something that they can use on their own hand on their own point but there's going to be a point where they can't do it all just like you said earlier right. yeah there's going to come a point where they're just too busy and they can't do that and then at some point dips uh, or sales are going to dip a little lower 
and uh, the, then they're going to start looking out for yeah. a, a real solution. Like, oh, my sales are going down, or um, I'm stagnant, or yeah. you know, we got to change something. And that's when they start really to understand the problem. Like, oh, okay, I really got to fix this. Right. Okay. Do you think um, that some of, some of these businesses that they're f not not that their first option, but like one of the first option is like marketing? Because I because sometimes like whenever these businesses like they get like a you know they get punched in the gut, their first instance is like layoff or um, you know cut down on cost rather than increase the marketing, you right. know mm -hmm. and. Sometimes that happens to to some businesses, and that might be opposite of what they should be right. doing. They should be allocating more to marketing, and maybe that's like an e educational moment that mm -hmm. we can use to kind of help them understand that you're just not targeting the right people right. Right. rather than cut back on cost and right. shrink. Now, that depends on the, on the industry as yeah. well. I mean, oil fields, you're really at the mercy of pretty much the government. At, at some China. some points, right? Don't say that <laughs> so, <word>. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, y they got to look at the process yeah. of what they're doing. There, there's a bottleneck somewhere in the process of their mm -hmm. either their marketing Damn or their sales. It's the second time I hear that word. <laughs> bottleneck. Yeah. So there's there's a there's something that you know a bottleneck. Is yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm the bottleneck. <laughs> <laughs> I was told this a few weeks ago, and they're like. I did not know that term, and I was like, "What do you mean?" And they're like, "You know, the the, the bottle, the it just it's big, and then it gets the bottleneck." I was like, "Damn, man, it took me like a day or two. I was like, "That's me. I'm the bottleneck." I had my... to learn that too. So yeah, I was like, I was, at a, I was that was me at some point. That was me. Too. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's there's a point in their sales process or in their marketing process or maybe in the fulfilling process where it's mm -hmm. just lacking, and so uh, I think it happens too much that they have to cut people off. Right. Or they have to lay off or they have to cut costs on some things because some management or somebody did something wrong or they weren't in the right, they weren't cohesively working together, and that's usually what happens. And the reason they do cut is because they, they, got, they went too long with that bottleneck mm. instead of fixing it when it was supposed to be. Whenever they were at their you know, peak, Correct. and that was the thing that was holding them mm -hmm. back. Now mm -hmm. they're at the you know, down slope. Down and Correct. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And do you think in general, like smaller business, um, let's say like under 500K, maybe 250K, marketing should be something that they should focus on? Like you think any business, regardless of your business, if you're generating income, marketing should be something you're really working on? Correct. Your it's definitely that. a staple for any business. Absolutely. Yeah, because even like even business to business, like you still have to target the other business, right, right. you know, it's like, um, there's some clients that are like, well, we don't really target the general audience. We target bigger companies to help us distribute the product. And it's Correct. like, well, you still need marketing materials for them. You still need video for them. But I like the idea what you said earlier is like, you have to see the overall business and the health of the business. Like for me, when I do brands, I'm you have like how much are you generating what's the uh how many employees like what is the whole health of the business right because a logo and a brand is not really going to fix a crappy product you right. know it's Oof. not going to fix a crappy uh, leadership a crappy stru a business structure and that's kind of how i work my business mm -hmm. it's like i am a doctor yeah. i'm not going to mm -hmm. just give you something right. i'm going to prescribe you see if they're the right fit See if the right fit if it's nice. if that's the thing that you need. Yeah, I asked that question earlier because uh, me like a year in, two years in, other you know people would come to the store. Hey, we do marketing, we do this. You know, like oh no, no I don't need you, bro. Like I just gotta take my little pictures. I'm good. But now I'm at the at the time and hanging out with Luis more, understanding that like man, maybe if I would have invested some time, some money into marketing, it would have been a whole different scale. But I think it's one. Um, I did business for so long, but I didn't like most of the stuff that I did is like I was taking orders, but it was still the business side of it. But I didn't understand like the marketing was taken care of. So I never l learned the marketing side of it, like ads and commercials and all that was done. So I was like, oh, that just comes with it. So once I started working on my own and doing my own stuff, it was like, what do I need videos for? What do I need this for? Like, but now understanding that's why I asked for people to understand that might be listening. If you are 
you know, generating income and revenue. And I think I heard this somewhere. It's like 15 to 20 percent of your sales should go to marketing. Like you should budget that in there. And if you're not doing that, you're kind of hurting yourself in a way because you should continue to yeah. not just stay there, like you said earlier, but continue to find that new customer that hasn't come in, that has no yeah. idea that you're like down the road from them right. or that you provide a service that they have, that they go farther away or that they get somewhere else. Even now, uh, you know, working with businesses in downtown, there's still a lot of people who don't know what we have downtown. Right. And there's still people who are like, why well, I know you guys have the downtown. It's because there's been a lack of marketing mm-hmm. with the with the community of mm-hmm. downtown Conroe. So if I post on I Love Conroe, that's not good enough? Just one post? Actually, I Love Conroe is a pretty good marketing yeah. place. Oh. There's yeah. a lot of people there. It's, it's like 80, Well, and, and the thing is, it's community-based. <coughs> And if you have a community that you can market to, I mean, that is just a a huge plus when it comes to have a leverage in marketing, for sure. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're a part condor. I mean, and to be honest, Texans are pretty prideful. Yes. Right? So they're going to take... Keep it home, stay home, mm, support home. Exactly. They're going to support local businesses. And that's really why I wanted to... You talked about Conroe earlier, and that's the reason why I... uh, uh, First of all, I'm from El Salvador. Uh, you too. You too? No. <laughs> you know <laughs> that. I just always give them a hard time. So I'm from El Salvador, and I moved here when I was two years old, so I'm, mm-hmm. I consider myself a Texan. But, uh, you know, living here, I, I've been able to understand the community and, uh, you know, uh, learn more about, like, how the culture is here. And so I've been able to use that as a uh, as leverage, really, to help my business grow. Just because everybody is like Conroe, 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 like right. Conroe, right? They're right. very prideful people. So, uh, if you are, if you can deliver a really good product to the people of Conroe, then they're gonna, you know, help you out right, right, in right. return. And then with Conroe, I mean, Conroe also helps us that it has been growing so fast, and it's just crazy. I mean, I got here 15, 17, Well, no, dang, I'm older now. I got here in the eighth grade. In eighth grade, I got here, and there is. N- yeah, there's really like nothing. nothing. There. There's, there's a couple mm-hmm. of like businesses here and there that have been around for yeah. years, but I think it's like in general, overall, like our generation is like that. Like everywhere you go, there's like startups, entrepreneurs, businesses. Everyone kind of doing what they're passionate about. It's like a whole wave of thing, a yeah. whole wave. Um, and I think we're just like riding this wave, and we had to take advantage of the opportunities that you know come our way. Yeah. And understanding the technology that we were, we were with, because just a few years, we would have been born a few years back, we would have been behind or in front of it and not really understand much of it compared to, I think this is a perfect time where I understand still how some of this stuff works. And I've, you know, people are, I'm, I'm 35, 34, 34. So I have people that are like, bro, you're, you're like a few years older than me. You don't understand how a phone works. You're like, bro, it's just it's not my thing. It's just, I wasn't, right. I wasn't in the boom area. You know, 2007, when the iPhone came out, I mean, I was still in high school, so I was able to learn how all that works. But yeah. Now it's been around technology. It's just been, it's just been yeah, a thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And, um, I mean, it's only going to get crazier from What do you here. think about uh, AI and chat GPT? And That's uh, what I was about to ask. I've been using um, Mid-Journey, Midjourney for work. Yeah. I've already started nice. using it. Um just because there's things that I can't produce at, right. the, at the amount of time that I have. So I'm like, okay, help me produce this. And then I'll take it, Photoshop it, make it my own. But, you know, it's like tools like that that just make it more efficient. Correct. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a... But it's for a video, I don't know. It's a tough like, subject, I don't man. know if it, there is a lot for video. Not yet, but there is a lot I've of... seen like an ad that shows you like how to cut it up and splice stuff. Mm-hmm. Like get rid of... What, but there's already been stuff like that. Like I know... Um, GoPro used to do that with their service. Like they would like take all your videos and p- make a story hmm. and oh get yeah, rid of right. all yeah, the yeah. stuff. But but now with AI, I don't know how how. Have you played with it? I have. I have. I actually use it for my business. Oh yeah. And so Both. I use multiple. Multiple. Yeah, multiple yeah there's ones. a lot of different okay. things. Yeah, I'm just getting in. There's there. there's over I think two hundred thousand apps already. Mm-hmm. Your eye. Um, but they use the same engine, right? Like OpenAI is probably. Uh, well, the thing is, uh, ChatGPT was kind of the first one that kind of blew up Mm -hmm. and so because it blew up so fast so quickly i mean in i think in five days it got two million users yeah so 
uh that was like last year into the like in yeah. december yeah. yeah i mean that's the fastest platform that's ever grown mm -hmm. and so because of that there's been other ai projects out there they just haven't launched or they haven't been able to market themselves very well mm -hmm. and so now that chat gpt launched and was able to like explode all the other businesses that were working on ai was like just go just push just it send out it. Send, send it, it out send, send it exactly <laughs> and so that's where you see the, the growth it just it, like explode mm. and that's so because there's people market, been working yeah, in the background market, yeah first there's to market is really things. important yeah it, like establishes you mm -hmm. as your as the it's like you said earlier once you're the first person they see yeah i'm gonna stick to it exactly that's what i said that's what no i'm right. responding to what he no, said that's what i, I that's said it right now we're doing first this again we're we all saying the same thing <laughs> but i mean i yeah i started using it no i mean a few days these guys have been in it deeper than i have but yeah i was like give me a picture of people chilling and it was raining and for the smoke shop and i was like oh po post it right, like, right and it's like and it, it and it helps uh just to uh especially for creatives i think it helps just to get more ideas out there's there's a lot Brainstorm. of times especially for creatives uh creative people <clears throat> that do like social media and they do uh you know any kind of artist it helps you just get you off that mind fog of like uh, i don't know what to create or you know you're out of ideas and so chat mm. kind of helps you uh kind of throw more ideas out there now i don't use it exclusively i use it just as a as, tool. A, as a tool really to um either come up with uh, you know, better sentences or uh, a better story or mm. um just just more creative ideas that I can use it mm. for. I don't necessarily use it exclusive just to like, because AI may know a lot, but it doesn't really understand human psychology yet. Oh, it just heard you. Now it's gonna work on it. Yeah, mm. I know. The algorithm just heard. Yeah, it doesn't understand the nuances of uh, correct. Yeah, interaction between cultures as well. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. how do you message a different culture if you're this culture or? Right. Um, yeah. There's no, still I'm a, sure. There's still I'm a lot. Now I'm sure you can get to that level because yeah, I mean ChatGPT, you like can. Six months. I mean, Relax. you can write a huge <laughs> thing about how the culture is. Right. And I'm sure it's gonna spit something out, but um, you still, I, th I think, at this point right now, you still need the human interaction with, with it. But it's crazy where it's going. I mean, I think we'll always need that human interaction, though. No, maybe I don't know. That's I don't know, man. Oh, man. I mean, right now, yes. Oh, I man. think in the for the first, uh, I don't know, for maybe the next ten years, maybe. But yeah. after that, uh, I mean, there's, there's going to be a, a lot of companies that build robots and stuff like that and put that AI systems in there. I mean, there's uh, Google had a, and I saw this last night, uh, Google had a, uh, had like a voice AI kind of mm -hmm. thing called a company, set up an appointment oh, yeah, seen that. and like, I think paid for it or something. I don't know. Something yeah. like that. But it sounded like a real voice it sounded like yeah. at the end of the commercial it was like this was an ai yeah. generated and voice. It's, it sounded like a like a regular human talking to another human set up an appointment and everything mm -hmm. and i mean that's that's a little scary because then you won't know who's who you won't know who's, who's who but at the same time it's kind of a plus because then people are like if they ask you if, if you're an ai mm -hmm. or a human they'd rather have an ai because i know because ai will solve the problem a lot quicker than a human will yeah yeah so it's a little scary well, yeah but it's like there's nothing we can do about it literally no, there's no, nothing no, we you can do about oh it. the the wave the already train, started yeah. and it's a yeah. huge 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 wave yeah. and it's only the beginning right that's crazy and only you don't need a lot for it to run you know even if the whole world was destroyed how was the likelihood of every single server and every single computer to be destroyed right you know Right. It's like it only needs one server to survive. It's like iLegend all over. Who? The movie iLegend. You mean uh, iRobot? I oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you mixed up together. Movies. Yeah, I got two movies I together. Robot. Two I robot. That's the I okay. in the beginning. Yeah, so. oh, okay. But, yeah, I think that's crazy. Well, I mean, even in the music industry, those some songs that have come out that have done by AI. Like the Drake song? The Drake songs and the Kanye songs and... Uh, there's a Taylor Swift one that just came out. Yeah, yeah, some of those. That's crazy. <laughs> you haven't seen it? No, I'm not. No. Well, so it's, I don't know something about somebody made the song and the AI used Drake's Drake's oh, voice. Uh, their voice. Oh yeah, and they mixed sounds, it every every. And yeah. it sounds just like them. But not for my well, my son was the one telling me all that stuff. Yeah. They took it all down. And even people getting phone calls right that now, they're yeah. like 
mm-hmm. son is in trouble and it sounds just like their son oh. and it sounds just like I'm like I, that would like, be scary like you wouldn't even insane. know yeah. like you'd be tricked so quickly right. that's what I'm saying it's like the good and the bad like, and, and right now it's limited like it's, it's um, <coughs> yeah absolutely it's uh, what's it called like it's called restrained even restrained yeah so I- if it's not restrained imagine what it could do you know and there's some uh, there's some organizations that are not restrained and uh, that could cause I mean, it, we just got to be careful how we how we use AI. It's like anything. Because there's, there's what's called singularity. Have you heard about that? There's going to be a point where That's humans are going to be indistinguishable from robots. Mm. Because, I mean, we, we're going to, the, the first <coughs> part of a robot is obviously the mechanics, right? right. But then once that's really good, they're going to start adding skin and they're going to start adding real eyeballs right. and real. Mm. Mm. That makes sense. Because I've been seeing stuff. some of them move and they move. It's like a human. Yeah. Like yeah. Even like little tiny muscle groups yeah. in their faces is like, whoa, that is Crazy. absolutely insane. Yeah. Even virtually, like once we get into the meta, like even you have like virtual AIs like in the metaverse, and then you have like regular humans in there in the metaverse, like how are you going to know too? Like who's who? You know, because they're going to be virtual metas, True. and then humans are going to be virtual metas. The only difference is one of them is connected to a human brain, and the other one is in the, yeah. in the, system. In the AI. And be What is this called? Non-playable? NPC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which one's an NPC? And then yeah. you have AIs, and then you have humans, and then NPCs, and then NPC? What is it? Non-playable yeah. Yeah. character? Yeah, yeah. non-playable character. Dang it. I can't wait. I, I can't. No, I like the human interaction stuff. Well, you won't oh. be able to tell. Yeah, you won't be able to you tell. You'll be good. I'm going to stab them. <laughs> <laughs> are you, you going to bleed or is oil going to come out? They'll have blood. Yeah, have you, you won't be able to tell. Uh, I think in 50 years, you won't be able to tell. No, I'll be old by then. I'll be 80. Before. That's good. That's when I want to go when I'm 80. I'll be like, ah, this is getting too real. See you guys later. <laughs> you See won't, you? It will already be real, though. You oh, won't know. damn it. Your little brain is already going to be... They're probably uh, satisfied like with you're, all the you're, you're probably gonna hire somebody to take care of you when you're old. And it'll be a robot. And it's gonna be a robot. But you're gonna think it's a human. Damn it. Like ex machina. Yeah, like, like ex machina. Yeah. Dude, that and see that's the other part where it's like it's really tough because at some point where is the line between the robots playing with human emotions? There isn't. Exactly. So how can you know And the humans are stupid, like have oh, you seen Have you seen that blind uh, that that reality uh, TV show on Netflix? Is like blind, love, love is, is blind. blind. Like you watched that, huh? You watched that? I watched it. With <laughs> my wife. Uh, he had to throw that in. The, my wife. Right. Uh, <laughs> I watched that. That guy hit Dwayne's like I love that show. <laughs> oh, dude. There's nothing wrong with watching it. So I haven't seen speaking it. about the psychology, it's like they fall in love without ever seeing each other. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, what's the difference between an AI falling yeah. in love with a human that's never seen each other, and then you add the the that they can't see each other, and the other person looks like a physical human, yeah. and they feel like a physical human. Well, I mean, there's already been cases about that oh, where yeah, people heard, like people her, that like they the movie her. Oh yeah, that's true. that was freaky. That was freaky. Movie. But it's already happened where people have people that they fall in love with. It's been a robot the so whole time. Yeah. I'm just gonna tell and you then this is interesting. You guys, you guys use ChatGPT? Mm-hmm. I mean, not ChatGPT, but like, uh, Snapchat. No. The, AI, the AI, the AI in there? Yeah, there's an AI on Snapchat now. And it, it, it's supposed to be like a, like a friend you can talk to whenever you're not getting oh. any messages. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's basically like you can ask it questions and it will like con- console you and tell you you're okay. And like a, lot of, a lot of software have... AI in there, like Notion has AI, mm-hmm. um, Snapchat. What the hell? Yeah, eventually, yeah. I mean, every every software I mean, is going to. I know the employees. Google. The employees were talking about getting it off their phones, but yeah. you know, there was that deep. Google yeah. Google also just came out with their own. It's called Bard, B A R D, mm. Bard dot Google dot com. So her is like a. He's talking to an AI. You know, he's just talking to her. Um, Bard. And then he falls in love. He basically falls in love with this AI and at the end she's doing the same thing with like millions and millions of other people. Dang. And uh why why it's like she's not limited yeah to just one individual. Right. Because it's AI. It's like 
how you people have bet. described it is like it's quantum it's not like in, it's not like lin- linear yeah, yeah, yeah. which is like just linear is like time right now right one on one right it's like exponentially in every direction that's crazy it's kind of like everywhere everywhere or everywhere everything all at once this yeah. reminds me of that disney movie show back in the day that the house um and the house was a robot and it did everything for yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Encanto, <laughs> <laughs> no boy. Uh, haunted house or something. Something, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this, this is getting too scary. Like the Jetsons, the, don't the Jetsons have the maid? Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, they have robots. I mean, they're more robotic than AI. Hopefully but yeah, they I mean, basically, like it's kind of like an AI. Yeah. Well, I mean, it interacts like right, a person. Right, yeah. right, right. Mm-hmm. Dang it! I thought that was all like just a cartoon. I didn't think this was gonna happen. It's a lot of sci-fi that portray that, like yeah, absolutely. Star Wars and. Oh, yeah, true, true, true. But I think, like, and then we have, like, the Matrix that's super close to what we think reality is, you know, which is kind of in a simulation. You haven't seen the Matrix Uh -uh. trilogy? No wonder. No. That's when people talk about it. I'm just like. Blue pilled. What is it? Blue pilled? Red pill? Blue. I like blue. Blue's my color. So, Uh, what else else you got going on? What else are you um, working on? So, uh, (laughs) I also uh, started a dealership. Last year, with a couple of, uh, uh, couple of some business partners that I have, some nice. friends, and so uh, it's called Texas Auto USA. Is it it's a here? good name. On three thirty six. It's on this. It's on the same building that we have. We have a lot oh, there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's on twenty eight fifty four. So Texas Auto USA is. Uh, <coughs> we started it because we wanted to uh, be a little different than other dealerships around. Mm. And uh, just be able to help help out the community as much as possible. And one of the things that we do is that five percent of our profits go to a nonprofit called a Hands of Justice, mm. and they help hu- victims of human trafficking mm. with uh, resources and a facility. And t- did you have to do all that <coughs> like on paperwork? Like this is how we're gonna structure it, and or is it? Ju- yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we had a. We had all of us. We had a talk before mm-hmm. we we started something like this, and we we came up with a plan. All like, right, this is what we need to do. Um, you know, one of our one of our partners, he's a mechanic, so he understands cars more. Uh, I'm more of the marketing kind of guy to help yeah. facilitate that. And then uh, we have Jacob Jacob Cheney. He's uh, he's more of the the leader, I guess you could call it. He's more of the, uh, the visionary. The visionary, and also. Uh, are the main investor really in the company mm-hmm. and so <coughs> um we want it to be uh, different and help out the community in a, in a much more effective way i guess you could you could say but <coughs> be more localized and you know have that small mm. small business feeling i guess you could say while still growing right. and being able to connect with the with our community as much as possible so um that's very interesting <coughs> it's like it's hard to do it all on your own right like you said yeah so having multiple people um allows you to use their skills set to um you know in a singular cause um i forgot what i was gonna ask but how did you get started like how did you how did you guys get started on the dealership like was it just like let's buy a bunch of cars and then let's put a lot and let's do the in-house financing or how does that how does that work um <coughs> from a, like a business perspective well first we had to look at the market yeah right and see how it's doing and see if cars are are a good business to go mm-hmm. into and as we looked at the numbers looked at some in analytics uh we figured out that there's a there's a huge business for that oh yeah and like these cars have been dollars. going up a lot yeah and, and so, so so have new cars i mean the market right. it's insane so very lucrative I mean, there's a lot of competition, but <coughs> um, there's still opportunity mm-hmm. for that. And so we decided to, we already had some, you know, we kind of came together. We, like Every single one of us, we have our own, um, I guess you could say, role in the company, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And so uh, because we kind of already had a system, kind of, you know, at the beginning, we kind of had like a, somewhat of a system already going. We had a mechanic who would you know, buy the cars, make sure they're all good, ready to go, then turn it over to me where I can market them and then sell them. 
and then you know obviously Jacob will be able to help with investing into the company mm -hmm. and uh, helping grow more. And so we already had all the all the mechanics, I guess you could say, of the so business. Yeah, we're already kind of doing it off of off of a lot, like because I know you know anybody can just you know buy a car, clean it up, fix it up mechanically, and then sell it. Right. There's a lot of business parts that goes into that. And so essentially you guys were already doing that, but y'all just wanted to do it at a bigger scale. Correct. And so we had to, uh, to learn more about, <coughs> about that industry, we had to um, really get uh, legit as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, Texas started to implement, um, uh, they had a new task uh, force that are cracking down on legitimate dealerships, basically. And so we had to really uh, legitimate. I mean, like having all your permits, having all your stuff, sending the right way. Um, all the paperwork has to be 100% correct. Otherwise, they're gonna just. I what mean, paperwork IRS. would that be like? The so first of all, you gotta have a, de a dealer's license to sell mm -hmm. more than four cars a year. Oh, wow. So if you don't have a dealer's license and you sell more than four cars a year, then um, they're gonna they're gonna come and find you. It's basically illegal. Yeah. Right. Wow. And so uh, that's kind of what we're <coughs> what we go through. We um, I mean, so many tasks that right, we right, had right. to we had to go through, so many different things that we have to go through to make sure that we're 100% legitimate, genuine business mm. that's running. Interesting. I didn't know there was like a such thing as. Well, I don't know. I guess well, I'm not in that industry, but just right. passing by a dealership, oh, that's a dealership. I, right. I mean, but it makes sense. Just like anything else, you have to have your permits. You have to have everything up to date. And I think that's very important to, to do that part of it and understand the concept. And I say that because I, I have people that, are, um, you know, want to do certain things. I'm like, you have to do it the right way. You have to right. get your food permits. You have to do certain things, you know. Oh, no, but I'm not going to do this. And, and um, that's very, very interesting. Because um, if, if you don't do that and you get pretty successful pretty quickly i mean your business is going to go down pretty quickly as well right and so we want to make sure that all uh all of our i's are dotted yeah, yeah. and t's are crossed, t's across, yeah. That's and awesome. uh, make sure that we're doing everything the right way and, right. and um sure. do you guys have like a attorney or do you guys just doing a whole bunch of research everyone's kind of like divvied up their part yeah basically we 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 don't have an attorney now but not yet <laughs> not yet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, everybody plays their own part. We all do our own research, and we come together every week to uh, see where we're at and find out where we where we need to go. Nice. I always hear that partnerships are really hard to to, um, to manage because everybody kind of has their all their vision. Like right. everybody has like their own vision of how things should be. Um, but I think it's a great opportunity to build something, and then everybody goes their separate ways. Right. But, yeah, that's really hard. But I know that that's how big companies work. Like, right. they have, like, chairs and chairmen mm -hmm. and, right. and, like, board, yeah. uh, board uh, members. Board members. But I think that's important what you said. Y'all meet up every week. Yeah. So and things have to be like yeah. set. Boundaries And you have, have rules. Set. Like, this is you, and we'll check in and see how you're doing. I think, and the, the reason I, I was going to ask that, too, is just because I had a partnership when I opened my first store to get my second, third. And we did two, three stores, and we're like, heck, yeah. You know, but then, one, money was the issue. Right, money when COVID hit, money started to become an issue, and then it's like, well, I need more money. I was like, stuff like that. But then it's like, also the age was a lot different. You know, I was 33, and he was like 60, 55. Mm -hmm. So then that was a big difference. But, but th those were things that I try to uh, try to get with him. Like, hey, we need to meet. We need to look at the numbers. We need to. He's like, oh no, 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 we're doing good. Just, just make sure we're selling. Yeah. And um, that's a red flag. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, well now now well, I understand, but. Yeah. My thing was because this person had gas stations. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, he knows. He knows business. Right. He's been in the corner area for a while. He, like, I should trust him. He knows. And I'm barely getting into business. But, oh, man, going through that, it, like the lawyer would tell me, it's, like, it's a divorce, bro. You're, you're getting a divorce. You're, 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 you're splitting. I want this chair. You want that chair. I want that. This is my, you know, you know, shelf. And, and, and I learn. And even now, I, I, I I'm still very, very scared to go into any of that. But I think you guys have it down where you guys already knew the rules and you kind of hold each other responsible. So like, hey, right. this is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you guys have like some paperwork that says if things go south or something happens, mm -hmm. like like this, what you should do. And that's what the attorney taught me is like, if you ever go into a partnership, it's like having everything because you don't know even if that person later gets a divorce, 
you know, their wife's going to want half of half of half, you know, but you have to have all that like written down and like what's going to happen. And I was like, dang. Yeah, absolutely. What what I really love about the little group that I, that we have our little business is that before we even started the business, we really, uh, we really bonded a lot before Mm -hmm. then. We, uh, we made sure that we understood each other's goals and understand, um, you know, where where we're all trying to go. And then, being able to um, come together and work for the same vision. And so um, I knew Jacob for a long time. My other business partner, his name is Sam, and I didn't know him very well. Uh, but uh, I think it also comes with down with, with the mentality that each person has as well mm. and where they're at in their life. Um, and so we're fortunate enough that each one of us are pretty stable in our own uh, personal lives that's been able to um, help us grow uh, consistently. Right. Okay. And uh, it's important to like set boundaries at the beginning and set expectations from the beginning uh, before you move forward and understand like, hey, this is how it needs to happen, this is how it needs to go. Are we all in agreement with that? Sure, awesome, let's go, let's mm-hmm. move forward. Mm-hmm. And then we can just help keep each other accountable every single time that we, uh, that we move with the business. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, because I I still get offers for even signing partners, and I'm like, no, man, like, they're like, no, no, it's no, tough, I'm gonna give tough. you the money and just give me some percentage, and I'm like, just having that over my head, especially with with yeah. what I learned, but 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 I do know, I guess, just depending on what the, my long term business plan is, is is it's either I'm gonna get there slow, you know, one store at a time with my, uh, money out of my own pocket, or go and get a person that has money to spare and wants to invest or believes in what we're doing. Because we get that a lot. Like, yeah. you know, we, d- we deal with a lot of older people. They're like, hey, man, I have a bunch of money. You know, like, let's open a store. I'm like, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk. Well, it depends, man. It, it, it depends. If you have a really good plan, then uh, do you know what OPM is? Other people's money. Oh. Mm-hmm. So if you have a really good plan and a really good strategy, then it can work. Right. I'm not saying that it can't. I mean, there's there's multiple ways to get there. Um, but it's just uh, it's making sure you have, like I said, all your eyes dotted and yeah. crossed, and making sure that you're doing the right thing every single time. All right. And set, expe- and set expectations from the beginning. You right. Know? Like, hey, it's gonna be a while for this to reach this goal or whatever it is that that we do that you guys are trying to do for sure. You have any Sounds business partners? Good. You nope. don't want business partners? Nope. You need nope. some. Nope. Why? I love employees and freelancers, and that's it. <laughs> and someone that I can help you, like, boom, have 20 freelancers. So oh, I'll just hire him as a consultant. <laughs> oh, I try to do that, too. That hasn't. That hasn't hel- helped you? No. No. I got the wrong person. <laughs> yeah, I need to. <laughs> Sometimes I, it I, is I, the wrong I, person. I need to go mm-hmm. to the, some of these events you were saying, the that's BMI. <coughs> BMI, that's, BMI that's a body management. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 What'd you call it? Uh, BNI. 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 Okay. Or, or chamber events. I mean, yeah. I haven't gone to them. Is that I went to a few chamber uh, chamber events, but it's kind of like what you said earlier, and um, same thing with the schooling, was um, it got to a point where when I was going, even with school, when I was going for business, what I was learning was like, I know this part. Like, can you teach me the other stuff? And I've gone two or three times to the chamber, and I'm like, I know this part. Yeah. Can you guys tell me when yeah. I'm going to learn you, this other I mean, part? I mean, even if it's not the chamber, even if you're just going to smaller events that individual businesses have mm. is good to connect with yeah, other networking. people. Yeah, it's part of like, kind of your marketing. I mean, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's, I mean, your network is your net worth, so you got to be able to find the right people that you can place into your lives or place into your business that can help you grow. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Sounds good, man. This was awesome. I learned a lot from you, and I, you I have that, that pyramid right here, a screenshot and everything. We're going to work on that. But we're going to bring you on we got to do some business together, man. Sure, Take absolutely. I'd love to help you guys out. Videos, have you ever uh, tried this? I have Oof. not tried this. Oof. Atomic Rhino. Do you know what it is? Uh, let me see. Well, don't open it yet. <laughs> don't open it. <laughs> smelling salts. You know what that is? I have heard of it. Oh, okay. I you have heard of it. You want to take a whiff of it? I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> We're all scared. We're all scared. Okay. It's, it ain't too bad. I'll do it first. Okay, go ahead. <coughs> really wakes you up, huh? Yeah. You're next. 
But just so just don't go. I, I tell people to keep it like down here. I've had some people, and they're just like, "Oh, sure, I'll try it." Boom, and just smacks them in the face. So what is it supposed to do? Just wake you up. Just wake you up. Just no. wake me up. Like power lift- for like b- power lifters and boxers. I, that yeah, are yeah I have out. seen those. Yeah, I just um, never understood. I mean, I understand the purpose of like waking you up, but right. I never, I never understood like when like people have passed out. You don't have out. to take it. You just. I thought that was gonna be our new like well, thing. Let's, let's try it. Let's try there you go. I mean, you, He's you, an athlete. You lift. He knows. Yeah. Huh. Oh, he likes it. There it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right. There it is. Gotta shake it up a little bit. Where's my? Uh, I need hey. a, a card, right? <laughs> there you go. See, si Sabe. Use a little. <laughs> so you're not doing soccer right now? Uh, I try to. I try to change the subject. Don't change the subject. I don't like this stuff. Oh, and I and I shook it up. We play soccer Mondays. Uh, I try to go to Carl Barton on Sundays. Okay. Oh, they play on Sundays. Yeah, Sundays. I've been I've been posting on Facebook. Where do people play? Where do people play? All right, guys. Well, it was good. uh, Another episode of Living the Dream with Luis and Ray. (laughs) Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you guys next week. Um, give us your Instagram real quick, and then we're out of here. Where do they find you? Uh, at Happy Lens Media. Oh, you're talking to me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So you can guys can find me at Happy Lens Media uh, pretty much across all the channels, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok. I mean, I, I only post. I don't You don't watch? It. Yeah, I don't okay. watch it. Not a lot of other people watch my stuff. Uh, but yeah, you can find me anywhere there at Happy Lens Media or you can find me personally. My page is Kevin G. Mendez and you can find me there on all the platforms as well. Sounds good, guys. Thanks, everybody. Tuned in. Thank See you all next week. Peace. Kevin.